स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया so that brings us to a a particular question how to find these conjugate points the moment we are able to find this conjugate points we are guaranteed that the extremal that we have will be neither a minimum or a maximum okay so the question now reduces to how to find how to find uh, the conjugate points okay so that is what we are going to describe next so we start with why our solution y being an extremal or the solution to the euler lagrange equation so suppose i have already evaluated the first variation and found that y is my extremal so y is a general solution is a general solution to my euler lagrange equation right so let me write this down partial f partial y prime minus partial f partial y is equal to 0 right okay uh y is a general solution to the euler lagrange for uh, for the functional j of y which is the fixed point functional okay so then i know that uh, this euler lagrange equation in general is a second order it's a second order differential equation right so we we expect that we are going to get two linearly independent solutions in general okay so the general solution the general solution to my euler lagrange equation uh, is since this is a second order this is a second order uh, ode the general solution contains contains two uh, parameters right it contains two parameters or my integration constants integration constants the general solution contains two parameters or integration constants which means that my general solution uh, can be written as follows so i have y which is my general solution to the euler lagrange is a function or uh, of course it's a function of the family of these two parameters c1 and c2 right uh, so so what have we got uh, so so what we have is so which means that so y is an extremal or so plugging back y into my f right which is the integrand plugging back my y into f which is my integrand uh well that i think that will not be necessary here so let me let me just delete that so all i need is this this observation so this note this so the result is so there is lots of arguments which and uh, students can follow the textbooks that we are uh, following but the main result is that to find the conjugate points all we need to do is to look at the solution to the jacobi accessory equation and those are found by differentiating this extremal solution with respect to this constants right for different different constants we are going to get different family of solutions all we need to find is the variation of these family with respect to these constants respectively so the result is as follows in order to find Uh, the conjugate points we have to find the solution to the jacobi accessory equation we can obtain we can obtain a solution to the jacobi accessory equation jacobi accessory equation by differentiating by differentiating the general solution by differentiating the general solution uh of euler lagrange equation with respect to uh, c1 and c2 
by differentiating the general solution of Euler Lagrange equation with respect to my constant C1 and C2, right? Or which means that my general solution u1 of x comma k, right? K will be uh, well, uh, k will be my my other parameters in the function, right? So, or let me just call it as u1 of x. So, my u1 of x is partial y partial c1 and my second solution u2 is partial y partial c2. Students can check that these are indeed the solution to the Jacobi accessory equation, right? So, so which means that my general solution uh, from here I get that my general solution, my general solution to the Jacobi accessory equation is u which is alpha times well alpha times u1 plus beta times u2 right now suppose suppose uh, for these uh, solutions to the J jacobi accessory equation there are conjugate points right so we are trying to find the condition for determining the conjugate points right so suppose there are conjugate points suppose so if kappa let us say not equal to x naught is a point which is conjugate this is a point point conjugate to x naught then there exists certain constants alpha beta which are all constants uh, uh, both not equal to 0 right both not equal to 0 not equal to 0 such that the, the solution to the JAE or Jacobi accessory equation vanishes at these two points such that u, uh, u of x naught which is alpha of u 1 of x naught plus, plus, uh, plus beta of beta of u 2 at x naught is equal to 0. These points x naught and kappa must be the roots of the solution and u at kappa which is alpha u 1 kappa plus beta u 2 kappa this is equal to 0, right. Uh, certainly we have avoided the, the trivial uh, equality by assuming that these constants are such that not both are 0, right. So, we have a unique solution to this problem. Uh, and the unique solution is not the trivial solution, not the zero solution. So, from here I can see that I can solve this system of equation. So, solve we can solve for the unknowns alpha and beta, right. We can solve for unknowns alpha and beta and we can get the following result. The result says that u2 of of kappa times u1 at x0 is equal to u2 at x0 times u1 at kappa and this uh, so so that is what we are after now suppose suppose at one of the points uh, suppose at one of the points the solution does not vanish right so so if so this is my condition that we are after. Uh, so le let me let me call this condition. So this is the condition condition for my existence of conjugate points. Okay. So that that this is the condition that we were after. So solving this will give us our, our conjugate points. Okay. So let us look at this idea with the help of an example. Okay. So let let my functional j be again this is the same example that we are writing is the same example that we uh, we began with in this lecture so let j be the integral from 0 to l of y prime square minus y square dx right and uh, for, for this uh, for this uh, functional i see that my integrand is y prime square minus y square or 
I see that uh, the, the solution the solution to the Euler Lagrange the Euler Lagrange solution will give me that u is well the extremal y is c 1 times uh, c 1 times cos of x plus c 2 times sin of x right. So, I can see that the the functions cos of x and sin of x they are the solution to the Jacobi accessory equation by the discussion above that we have done. Okay. So, what we have is what we have is the following. Uh, so, let me call this denote these two functions u 1 by del y del c 1 is equal to cos of x. So, that is my first solution and u 2 which is del y del c 2 which is sin of x is my second solution. right? So, the, my two solutions here are for the Jacobi accessory equation are these following. So, let us look at one of the solutions here the sin of x. Note that uh, the sin of x certainly vanishes at one end point 0 and it also vanishes at uh, another end another point pi and suppose let us also assume that L is greater than pi. right? So, so what we have is the following. Uh, consider consider my u 2 which is equal to sin of x right. So, any point which kappa which is conjugate to to 0 for u 2 will satisfy this starred relation above right. So, what I have is the following any any point kappa uh, conjugate. So, kappa not equal to 0, but conjugate to 0 any point kappa conjugate to 0 will satisfy my starred con conjugacy condition u 2 at kappa times times u 1 uh, well u uh, 2 at kappa let me denote yeah u 2 at kappa times u 2 at 0 is equal to uh, well I have two results u 1 and u 2. So, so u 2 at kappa times u 1 at 0 is u 1 at kappa times u 2 at 0. right? So, from here I am going to get that this result will tell me that sin kappa the point conjugate to 0 must satisfy this equation. And the solution to this equation is kappa is equal to plus minus n pi. Now, certainly if if my domain is bigger than pi, then it implies that pi is which is not equal to 0 is a point conjugate conjugate to 0. So, the conclusion out of all this discussion is that the extremal that we will get will uh, well. So, we have found a point conjugate to 0 right? and later on we will see that for the same example the moment we we are able to find non zero or non equal conjugate points we are guaranteed that the extremal that we will get is neither the max nor the min right but so so that concludes this example okay so let us also look at another example namely the geodesics on the plane we know that the extremals are straight line geodesic on a plane so my functional my functional is my arc length functional square root of 1 plus y prime square d x my arc length functional and my general my general extremal solution my extremal solution y of x comma c 1 comma c 2 is c 1 x plus c 2 right. So, my extremal solution is of this form I know that these are straight lines and I also so, I can see that the solution to the Jacobi accessory equation here is u 1 is x and u 2 is a constant let us say 1. So, again if I use my starred condition from star let us say kappa uh, not equal to x 0 is, uh, is conjugate conjugate to x 0. If if I use my starred condition, I will see that I quickly satisfy the condition that 
the conjugacy condition is kappa is equal to x0 right the start condition but 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 that is itself a contradiction because we assumed that kappa is not equal to x0 right so which means that no points conjugate conjugate to 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 x0 right or in other words uh, further check and further check that my strengthened legendre condition is also satisfied here so then it means that uh, that the extremal that we get the straight lines are a local minima right or a weak local minima which means that y y of x comma c1 comma c2 they are weak local minima okay they are weak local minima okay so so we can see the power of the second variation now the moment we are able to find the extremal we can determine under certain criteria we can determine whether the extremal we have got is a local minima or not okay so let us look at another example the case of the catenary okay so so this is the case of the catenary okay so what we have is the following so we consider the functional let us consider the functional uh, with the integrand with with my integrand f of x comma y comma y prime which is given to be y times 1 plus y prime square so i right away work with this integrand and my x is on the interval 0 to 1 right so i know that the general solution the general solution to this catenary problem is y of x comma c1 comma c2 is given by c1 cos hyperbolic of x by c1 plus c2 right now let me call this as r1 because i am going to refer it later on and i know that the solution uh, to the jacobi accessory equation will be the respective derivatives with respect to c1 and c2 i see that u1 is del y del c1 which will give me cos hyperbolic of x by c1 plus c2 minus x by c1 plus c2 times sin hyperbolic of x by c1 plus c2 right and finally my u2 which is the partial derivative of y with respect to c2 is minus sin hyperbolic of x by c1 plus c2 so let me call this this result and so so we have also we have the boundary conditions which are y of 0 is equal to y of 1 is equal to uh, let us say 1 i call these boundary conditions as my r2 and i call these solutions to the jacobi accessory equation as my r3 okay so so then uh, we can use the boundary condition to find these constant c1 and c2 so from my condition r1 and r2 i must have that the constants must satisfy this relation cos hyperbolic c2 is equal to cos hyperbolic of cos hyperbolic c2 plus c2 right or i can get that i can get that cos hyperbolic c2 is equal to minus 2 c2 right uh, i can directly solve so this is my transcendental equation that i solve i know that there are two solutions to this problem let me denote those two solution one of the solution c2 star is given by uh, c2 star equal to minus 0.6 and the other uh, let me denote it by c2 of well let me denote it by c2 uh, 1 this is minus 0.6 and the other solution i get is is uh, minus 2.1 right that is the solution to this e two equations now from we can substitute these values of the constant into our jacobi accessory equation and we are going to get so from from my r3 
I am going to get my Jacobi accessory equation solution as follows. So, u 1 is equal to cos hyperbolic of c 2 of 1 minus 2 x minus c 2 times 1 minus 2 x times sin hyperbolic of c 2 times 1 minus 2 x. And my second solution is minus sin hyperbolic of c 2 times 1 minus 2 x. Okay. So, then let me just uh, make a substitution of variable. Uh, I am going to substitute c 2 times 1 minus 2 x as my new variable xi. Okay. So, let, let my xi to be equal to c 2 times 1 minus 2 x and then, then it implies that if I were to find the point conjugate to 0, any point, any point conjugate to 0, conjugate to 0 will satisfy, will satisfy the following uh, conjugacy condition. I just plug in the point, uh, the point 0, I see that the following holds. So, what have we got? We have the following condition cos hyperbolic C 2 minus uh, sin C 2 sin hyperbolic C 2 times sin hyperbolic xi, right. So, when we plug in 0, so when we plug in x equal to 0, I get that xi uh, is equal to C 2, right. So, that is why I get this one of the points, okay. okay. So, then the condition is this is equal to cos hyperbolic xi minus xi times sin hyperbolic xi, right. This is times, times, uh, times sin hyperbolic C 2. So, we can cross divide by sin xi and sin C 2. I see that the relation reduces to the following cot hyperbolic of C 2 minus C 2 is cot hyperbolic of C 2, well not C 2, but xi minus xi. Okay. okay. So, then let me call this as my condition R 5, because we already have R, well we already have, where is my R 4? Uh, uh, well, I also need the condition R 4, the R 4 is the relation between C 1 and C 2, right. So, when I, when I use, well I also need to mention the following using using this condition r uh, this let me call this as condition star so using star and my boundary condition r2 i can see the relation between c1 and c2 so let me say that using using r2 and my star i can see that my c1 satisfies the following so 1 over c1 is cos of cos hyperbolic of C 2 which is minus 2 C 2 and I call this result as R 4, right. So, that is the relation between C 1 and C 2. So, we see that R 4 itself has two solutions that we have mentioned and for a fixed C 2, let me say that for my first solution, uh, for my, I am talking about now star right. Uh, so, for, for my solution, for my solution C 2 given by C 2 of 1, which is minus 0 0.6, right. For th this solution to my R 4, there are two solutions, remember that. For the first solution, uh, I can immediately see that, that R 5, this conjugacy condition has, has two roots has two roots, right. Uh, well, one of the root is, uh, one of the root is xi being C 2 itself, uh, that is corresponding to when x is 0. So, xi is C 2 and the second root, the second root is when, when uh, C 2, uh, 
so then when C2 is uh, C2 is C2 of 1, I see that the second root is also at x equals at x equal to 2.4, right. So, the second root to this equation R5 is at x equal to 2.4, but the most important part, part is that this does not lie in the interval from 0 to 1 or what we see is that there are no roots, no non-trivial roots which are conjugate to 0 0.0 for, for the first case, right. So, what we have got is uh, also students can check that the check that the strengthened Legendre condition is true, strengthened, strengthened Legendre condition holds holds for holds for any uh, constant C2. So, that is not a problem and since, uh, so let me call this as my case A, uh, from, from case A there does not exist a point conjugate conjugate to 0 in the open interval from 0 to 1, right. The only point conjugate is outside the interval, which means that the solution that I am going to get is a weak local minima, right. So, which means that the solution, the extremal, the extremal that I am going to get which is y1, which is equal to negative 1 by 2 c2 of 1 cos hyperbolic, cos hyperbolic of c2 of 1 times 1 minus 2 x is a weak local minima, weak local minima, right. We can do a similar exercise for the second case. For the second case where c2 of 2 was uh, the second solution to r uh, to star or r4 was uh, was negative 2.1, we see that this leads to that x is equal to uh, 0 0.6 which lies in the interval from 0 to 1 is coming out to be a point conjugate to, to 0 okay, or conjugate to 0 satisfying. So, it is satisfying my, my condition R5 right. So, R5 is my conjugacy condition. So, we have found a point which is conjugate to 0 or the conclusion is that that the solution or the extremal y2 which is given by negative 1 by 2 c2 of 2 from the second constant here cos hyperbolic of c2 of 2 times 1 minus 2 x. This solution is neither going to give me a minima nor going to give me a maxima okay uh, maxima for for j right okay so so that concludes our discussion on the determination of uh, of the nature of the extrema using uh, the existence or non existence of conjugate points in my next topic I am going to look at what do we mean by or what is the geometric interpretation uh, of conjugate points and further we are going to look at a specific class of functional namely functional which contains convex integrands. And towards the later half of the next lecture we will uh, diversify all our uh, theory into the development of the problems in optimal control theory. Thank you very much for listening, thank you very much.